How can we lessen and sometimes even eliminate negative feelings about a bad experience? One way we can do this is through expressive writing. So what exactly is expressive writing? Expressive writing is a technique that falls under the umbrella of expressive therapy, also known as art therapy, which includes things like music, dance, theater, art, and writing. So all of these interventions use creative activities to share and process difficult feelings and help us cope with different pressures. If you've ever cranked up sad or energizing songs in your car or earbuds to cry or release aggression, gone out dancing with friends after a bad breakup, or even dancing around the house in your underwear, uh, maybe gone to a stand-up comedy club for a good laugh, attended a paint night, or even bought yourself one of those adult coloring books, you've already used art therapy. The therapeutic effects are even better when we actively create the art. So when we use art to express ourselves, there's even more benefits. So one of the ways that people express themselves, often in an artistic way, is on social media. So social media could even be regarded as a digital diary. So we can reflect on our lives by scrolling backwards through our feed. But we all know that our digital diary on social media is our highlight reel, right? So this reminds me of a quote that I've always loved from uh, the movie Just Married with Ashton Kutcher. You never see the hard days in a photo album, but those are the ones that get you from one happy snapshot to the next. It's a great quote. So what do we do with the hard days? How do we reflect back on those? And why would we even want to? <laughs> One of the ways is through keeping a diary or a journal. So unlike the highlight reel of social media, our diary might even be our shame reel. It might be the place where we express our true feelings, including our fears, disappointments, or embarrassing moments. If you do keep a diary or a journal, how does it make you feel? Like, is it therapeutic? How does keeping a diary differ from expressive writing for therapy? Don't both involve expressing yourself in writing. Expressive writing is a, in a therapeutic context in, involves choosing a painful or traumatic event on purpose and expressing in writing your thoughts and feelings about that event, doing it for 10 or 15 minute intervals over a period of several days in a, in a row. And this is a practice that comes from the researcher uh, James Pennebaker. If you Google his name, um, you could probably find several articles and books that talk about the therapeutic benefits of expressive writing. Expressive writing with intention, as opposed to maybe just writing a, a journal entry or a, or a diary entry. The idea is that repeatedly writing your thoughts and feelings about that distressing event can help to reduce its power or the distress that it causes. And studies show that it increases our mental health and well being through the act of self disclosure. So, expressive writing might cause distress or discomfort in the early stages of writing when you first start. You might feel a range of emotions like anger or sadness. But after a period of time, studies show that writers stop focusing solely on the negative aspects of the event and they get unstuck. So why is that? Well, when we organize and structure the retelling of an event, we regain a sense of control. We start to find our voice and make meaning of that distressing event. It doesn't take the pain away, but the process of writing can lead to personal growth because we often end up focusing on the lessons learned and the insights gained. And when we're able to share lessons learned and insights gained, we may even find purpose in our pain. In my own experience, I decided to write a memoir documenting my experience of being attacked by a random stranger, resulting in traumatic brain injury, spending two months in the hospital in rehab, and navigating my way through the justice system and the trial of my attacker. In the months leading up to the trial, I ended up writing the first four chapters of the memoir. 
I woke up early every morning and spent a couple of hours writing as a way to prepare myself. It was cathartic and, in, and an enlightening process for several reasons. I researched different medical terms related to my injuries that were documented in the, the clinical records I had access to. I read through the newspaper articles about the search and rescue and arrest. Uh, I reflected on all of the ways I was shown support. And I read my husband's journal of events. He kept a, a diary with him for the two months that I was in the hospital and noted everything that happened during my hospital stay. It was only because of his diary that I was able to write the first couple of chapters since I was in a coma for the first week and it took another couple of weeks to regain awareness of my surroundings. So I used his notes and my memories from the point of regaining consciousness uh, to write those, those chapters. So writing about the search and rescue and the hospital experience helped me to get some closure and helped to prepare me for the trial, prepare me mentally and emotionally. Through writing, I was able to organize my thoughts and feelings and I had a better understanding of events. During the trial, I spent time every day using expressive writing to vent my feelings and frustrations. And once I start writing the chapter about the trial, I'll transpose all those entries from my expressive writing sessions into narrative form to tell the story. Now, I'm sharing my own experience using expressive writing technique, but I'm not a registered therapist. So depending on the trauma or distressing event that you choose to write about, it's advisable to use it in a combination with talk or other kinds of therapy at, or at least a personal support system. You never know what emotions may be released or triggered and you don't want to be blindsided. If you want to engage in the expressive writing process, perhaps with the goal of converting your expressive writing into a memoir about your lived experience, maybe start simple with a low stakes writing sample. So how about we experiment together? Think of something that has upset you recently and write down anything that comes to mind. It doesn't have to be traumatic. It could be something like you missed your bus and were late for an important appointment, or the server at your favorite coffee shop was rude to you and got your coffee wrong to boot. <laughs> or if you're like me and you are shunned for leaving the fundamentalist religion of your upbringing, perhaps someone you grew up with just walked by you like you were a ghost. So jot down anything that has upset you recently, even just one thing to get us started. And once you've written, written it down, we'll come back to it later. For people like me who now live with a brain injury, sometimes we forget things like people's names or dates and details and words. Sometimes we don't recognize people or can't place where we know them from. And sometimes we respond to situations with anger or tears, but we can't explain why. It's frustrating and confusing and sometimes embarrassing. <laughs> so this may cause us to isolate ourselves. This is where the benefits of expressive writing come into play. So let's just say uh, you had an embarrassing moment like one of the ones I just mentioned. Say you forgot someone's name that you've known <laughs> for years or you said nice to meet you to someone you've already met but forgot, I've done that. The person may not know that you have a brain injury, for example, and you're not likely to mention it, right? We often just take the hit of humiliation. <laughs> Instead of beating yourself up about it, write about it. Write everything that comes to mind about the encounter. And bullet points are fine. It doesn't have to be in complete sentences. Doodles are fine. Swear words are fine. Studies even show that people's handwriting often changes depending on what they're writing about. So when people write about their deepest fears, their handwriting often becomes childlike or primitive. It's very interesting how our brain works. So the advantage of expressive writing is that you're writing to yourself. You let yourself know what you're feeling and thinking. No one else needs to read what you've written unless you choose to share it. So now go back to the event that you wrote down and make some notes. 
How did you feel when it happened? Or how do you still feel about it? What do you wish went differently? What would you change? What do you wish the other person did differently? And use bullet points, stick people, doodles, whatever feels good to you. Once you've done that, set it aside and we'll come back to it. So what is the difference between expressive writing, creative writing, and storytelling? With creative writing, we may be writing fiction or poetry and be using our imagination, inventing a reality. With expressive writing, we're focusing on our feelings about a real event. With storytelling, we can certainly use fictional content to tell a story, but we can also structure our expressive writing in a narrative fashion to tell a story and to make meaning of an event. Making meaning of an event or an experience can help take the sting out of a distressing experience. It can help improve our mental health. So like in my case, where writing about my healthcare experience and my feelings about the trial, they helped to neutralize the negativity. The more I wrote about it, it was like I was writing about someone else. So we can take our bullet points, doodles, swear words, and structure them into a story. I've taken a few storytelling courses and one of the most useful tips I learned was to start the story writing process by first coming up with a dramatic question that the story will answer. What does that mean? You may already be familiar with a story arc, a basic story arc. The most basic one includes a beginning, who you were, an inciting incident, rising action or events leading up to the climax, the climax or pivotal moment where the dramatic question is answered, then a falling action, how things change, your new normal, and then finally an ending, a resolution, who you are now. The answer to the dramatic question takes place at the climax point of the story. For example, let's say we've done expressive writing about encountering a rude server at your favorite coffee shop. Let's just say Starbucks. Our dramatic question might be, how will you respond to a rude server at Starbucks? The what happened then question. You may be thinking, that's not very dramatic. But the point is creating drama around one idea that you can develop your story around. Structure your story around answering that question. Now go back to the upsetting event that you wrote down earlier and form it into a dramatic question. And don't be intimidated by the word dramatic. It's just meant to tease out of your heads an interesting and intriguing way to structure your story. Once you've done that, put it aside. Okay, now that we have one thing to focus on in our story, we can fill in the rest of the structure, the rest of the arc. What I find that helps me is making an outline or a table with the elements of the story arc and then filling in the details in point form before I start uh, writing in complete sentences. So here's an outline of one story I wrote uh, that related to a, a comical incident I had at the hospital. And so if you see on the left hand side, I've got what's the dramatic question. Um, then the, uh, the introduction, so who was I, who, who were you, and I put all the things about who I was, um, what the inciting incident was and the details relating to that, what the climax was, I answered the dramatic question, and you'll see like there's a lot of, of just uh, points in outline form, it's not structured in, in sentence form. Um, then after I answer the dramatic question, what's the falling action? What's the new normal? And then finally, who are you now? So creating this outline really helped me to uh, chunk, I guess you could say, chunk the story and, and not be overwhelmed by everything I wanted to say. I could focus in on one aspect at a time as I went along. And that was a, ended up being a really funny funny story with a lot of irony um, and one that I share a lot when I do do keynote speaking uh, just to just to kind of um, find humor in some of the distressing things we experience as as women when we're not at our aesthetic 
best, I guess you could say. So as you're completing your outline like this, you can take a break and engage in expressive writing when you come across a point that's troubling. You can expand on it and kind of like get all the all the thoughts from your head out in, in writing and then just come back to it later for narrative form. You want to listen to what your heart or mind is telling you and focus your attention on that one point. Write about it, how it made you feel. And it might even be that what you felt was a happy thought or something that made you laugh. Whatever feeling or thought comes to mind, take a break and write about it. So get it out of your head and onto paper. The great thing about this process is that it's meant for you. No one is waiting for your story to be written. It's not a school assignment. It's simply a means for you to use your mental and emotional energy to express yourself. So when I create an outline or a table, I don't always fill things in in order. But for simplicity, let's go back to the beginning. So we have our dramatic question. So that part is complete. Now let's write a line or two about who we were in the beginning before the event took place. What was, what was your daily routine, the important people in your life, your hobbies, etc. cetera. Uh, if we use the same example of the rude server at Starbucks, we might write, I'm normally a happy person, but I was in a bad mood and having a bad day. I enjoy getting a cup of coffee or tea at Starbucks. It makes me happy. Sometimes I go with a friend, but on this day I went alone. I only had a couple of extra dollars in my account for a cup of coffee. I wanted to get out of the house and go somewhere familiar. The servers at Starbucks are always nice to me. So here you're kind of setting up who you were, Some, all, of the, all the details leading to the event. What questions might come to your mind as you go through these points? Why were you having a bad day? Why were you alone on this day? Will you have enough money when the bill comes? Will the servers be nice to you? So for the next part of the story, the rising action, you might answer some of those questions. From your expressive writing, you might have entries about why you were having a bad day. Then you might share a historically good experience from a visit at Starbucks for contrast. Something that creates curiosity in the reader if you choose to let other people read it, right? So try writing a couple of lines under the rising action heading. You can write some points related to your dramatic question. For example, why were you having a bad day? Why were you in a bad mood? Uh, you might write something like, I often feel disrespected and misunderstood by people who don't know what I've been through. Uh, people judge me and are unkind and impatient and then maybe add more detail to the story, like another, another layer. For instance, I had to call an internet provider because of a problem with my service and the person was rude and unhelpful. I needed access to my computer to do something important, kind of creating momentum. So using expressive writing, it can be very helpful and cathartic to express yourself providing details about what led to the climax, the answer to the dramatic question. Now you want to tell the story of what happened, the pivotal moment that answers the dramatic question. So in our example, how will I respond to a rude server at Starbucks? We will want to fill in the details of the event. Did we snap back, yell, swear, ask to speak to the manager, or walk out? Here again, organizing, structuring and labeling the details can help take the power out of the negativity of it all. It's like we're looking at the experience instead as an observer. It's a mindfulness technique because we're trying to explain it in narrative form as opposed to simply writing swear words or heated points. In this case, our empathy and compassion might surface and we might even start to make excuses for the server's rude behavior. Maybe they were also having a bad day, or maybe they missed their family back home, or maybe they just got yelled at by their boss. This process of organizing the story from our expressive writing entries helps us to make meaning of experiences and can neutralize the negativity. So if you've written down a dramatic question, take a moment to write the answer to the dramatic question and a couple of supporting points. You can just do it in point form for now and then go back and polish it up later. 
So we've talked about who we were, what led to the climax, the dramatic question. We've answered the dramatic question, and now we're at the part of the story where we begin to land the plane. This can be the shorter, less detailed part. Here again, you can refer back to your expressive writing entries, and those entries may relate to how you'll choose to handle rude servers in the future, how you've reevaluated servers' behaviors based on your empathy, or how you want to help make a change in some way. You might even choose to use humor in your writing based on the lessons you've learned. In one course I took with Second City, writing sadness through humor, where the Stacy story comes from that I showed you earlier, we were taught that we're not expected to make light of sad or traumatic events, but to find humor in the people and circumstances that surround an event. So with this Starbucks experience, we could tell the story of a server being rude and how we may have bit back. We still get to tell that part, but we could share a, a comical things that surrounded the event. For instance, funny customer conversations you overheard, or servers flirting with each other thinking no one noticed, or how a, ser a server put a rude customer in their place. You can use funny circumstances surrounding your own negative experience as a way to share your story without making the sad, negative parts the focus of the story. Take a moment and write a line or two about something that changed as a result of the event that you wrote about. Did your point of view change? Did you decide to take further action? Did you feel defeated, convinced nothing would change, etc.? Finally, we end the story by sharing who we are now, who we became as a result of the experience. And it might be a simple statement or a detailed description of how we've changed or that we didn't change at all. There's no right or wrong. Bottom line, it's your story, it's your expressive writing, and it's you it's meant to benefit. To summarize, expressive writing is a way to share your thoughts and feelings about a distressing event. You're meant to write to yourself first. Sharing is just an option. If you wanna share it, you can use a storytelling arc to organize and structure your expressive writing entries. And also you can find meaning and purpose by considering lessons learned and insights gained. I hope you found this video helpful and instructive in some way. Stay tuned for more videos about different expressive therapies and expressive writing, in particular as relates to writing a memoir to share your lived experience with others. So thanks for watching and be positive.